everybody, Witty here. If it's your first time in, welcome. It's so nice to meet you. I'm Witty, and I'm a full-time internet goblin on a mission to cultivate community through making and sharing weird art and games. And today I am so excited to share with you a game that, not to be dramatic, but kind of feels like it was made for me. What if I told you there was a macabre, brutal, fast-paced battle royale game that was as merciless as it was fun. Oh, and it's filled with vampires, ghouls, and gothic horrors. I know, I know, it sounds almost too good to be true, but I am so excited to share with you today Damnation the Gothic Game by Black Letter Games. Look how cool. Will you survive the night? It begins. You. I know what you have done. And for once, I am not the monster of this story. There can only be one winner. For the others, damnation awaits. I knew I was in for a treat when these are the words that were my introduction to the game. So, picture it. You find yourself on a plane of reality in which Dracula, yes Dracula, holds dominion. And you are playing from a cast of Victorian villains that have been cursed to damnation for all eternity. So each day you and your fellow baddies are resurrected with no memory of who you are or how you got there. Your fate? You have been cursed to hunt and be hunted by each other for all eternity as a punishment for the wicked way in which you lived your life. This is a game for two to eight people with a really simple goal, be the last player to survive. A brutal devilish battle royale taking place in Dracula's castle yeah, sign me up. Also, isn't the art so nice? Kiyoteo did the art and it just has so much personality and charm. Every card is a work of art. The Darkest Dungeon vibe meets comic book style is just killer. There are tons of little references and nods to all sorts of spooky pop culture, both visually and in the clever writing. I just, every single one is a treat to look at. Damnation the Gothic Game is actually Black Letter Games' first game. It's seriously such an accomplishment and they're a company based in South Wales and I know that I'm going to be very much anticipating every project it is that they do. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the game itself. Damnation takes place over four chapters, which is very evocative of the spooky story that's being laid out in front of you. Getting set up to play is super simple and straightforward. Lay out the beautiful board, try not to get too distracted by the art and the fun quotes on the cards as you shuffle them and lay out the respective decks. Shuffle and place your five death knell cards in their designated area. Place all your trap tokens face down, I stepped into a bear trap my very first time playing, which was funny and sad. Set your vampire board, cards, and time tracker aside, and the vampire standee into the vault. Then roll to see who goes first. So now that you're all set up, the arrival phase begins. Isn't that name so classic gothic horror? In this phase, you gather heirloom cards and choose your villain. I've played as a handful of the villains now, but I was actually really surprised to find that I enjoyed playing as the professor. They're just so cold and calculating. A good choice if you'd rather be sneaky and conniving rather than outright brutish. After you choose your character, you'll get your board and standee, as well as your health tracker and your talent tokens. It's a small detail, but for me, the fact that these are called talent tokens was really evocative of the classic gothic horror themes and thinking of these villains as characters in this macabre story. Players choose starting points by selecting one of the heirloom cards in their hands and then going to the room indicated on the card. These heirloom cards are one of the many devices that keeps every game different while you play. They'll help influence your decisions at the beginning of the game and help keep things moving, incentivizing certain actions. It's considerations like these that make me think of Damnation as the perfect board game for people who want to try a more advanced board game but don't want to end up completely overwhelmed. When it's a player's turn, they're going to move through five simple phases. Before movement, movement, resolution, other actions, and end of turn. Room cards can be one of six types. Event, weapons, protection, actions, and curses. For a more detailed explanation of how to play Damnation, the folks at Black Letter Games not only have a super clear, visual-friendly rule book, which is perfect for my style of learning, but they even have a handy-dandy QR code that you can just scan with your phone and go right to a super simple video. This is perfect for me because I like to read through rules and then watch a video back referencing those rules that I just read. Overkill, maybe to some, but for me it's just how my brain works. In Damnation, a gothic game, slaying another player isn't just going to get you closer to your goal of being the last villain standing, but you can actually harvest their soul and then go cash it in at the very aptly named Dark Tower for super powerful rewards. I just, I love that. I'm an absolute sucker for a horror aesthetic with a grim premise that ultimately, inevitably devolves into laughter and great jokes and memorable moments and 
Damnation the Gothic game is absolutely that game. I really recommend playing different characters and then deciding from there which playstyle you prefer. All of them have access to really unique talents which totally changes every gameplay. One of my favorite additions to this game is the death knell cards. So whenever a villain is slain, a random death knell card is overturned and a new rule is being introduced to the game. Whatever it is, it's gonna make Dracula's castle an even more deadly place to be. I really loved this mechanic. Not only does it add cinematic twists and turns, but it also really naturally adds to the pacing of the game because as you're going and as you're dying, it's naturally ramping up the tension. It really feels like it's a movie bringing you towards a cinematic climax. Another thing that really adds fuel to the fire of this game's descent into just fast-paced madness is the descent tracker. This tracker comes into play once a character is slain and what it's essentially counting down is the castle crumbling down around you. Because the cards can change the gameplay so much depending on which are drawn, when they come into play, and what the board is looking like when it happens, every game is so different. There's just so much replayability to this game. There's also the possibility that you can take control of Count Dracula himself and unleash absolute hell on your opponents. Oh shoot, you died? Oh. I'm sorry, did you think that in this spooky gothic horror game that being slain meant the end of the game for you? Nah, -uh. now you can haunt the castle and you even have a chance of coming back and even winning the game from there. I really love this because one thing about battle royale games is sometimes, especially if you're playing with a lot of people, you can get taken out early and you're just hanging out. You're just twiddling your thumbs while everyone else has fun. Which can be fine to hang out and spectate and, you know, you're still part of the group, you're still part of the game. But let's be honest, it can be kind of a bummer and that just doesn't happen in this game. It's through dice, cards, and special abilities that you explore the castle, searching for powerful weapons, armor, and powers to defeat your fellow villains as they do the same. Okay, so this game is obviously not what you typically think of when you think of board games as far as themes and mechanics. It isn't overly complex, but every game is still really exciting and varied. If you have a friend or a kiddo who is just too cool for board games, which first off, they should cut that out. But second, I really think that this is a great game to bring to them and say, look how cool. Are you too cool for this? No way. No way. I also can't tell you how excited I was to receive the Night of the Vampire expansion. This adds six new villains, new vampire powers, new heirlooms, five new death knell cards, and with all those, even more variety to the game. So by now, y'all probably know that I really love immersion. When I like something, I just want to dive headfirst into the world. Yes, I am that person that makes playlists for all my D&D and VTM characters. And yes, I like to play spooky games by candlelight with appropriate music on in the background, and I really think you should give that a try. This game is as immersive as it gets thanks to some really cool touches that I am so excited to tell you about. First off, there's a book. Damnation the Gothic Game by Fraser Lee is a super fun and spooky read that absolutely nails all the classic gothic horror vibes. I will say I was reading this before bed one night and I had truly, truly wild dreams. Like no exaggeration, zombies and werewolves were in that dream. It was fun, I recommend it. There's also a Dracula bust for you to paint. It's gorgeous and it looks like so much fun to paint up and I can't wait to dive into this one. You better believe I'm gonna paint it up while listening to the Damnation soundtrack. Oh yeah, there's a soundtrack. It's the music that you've been listening to for this whole video. It's by the Ford and there's actually three versions you can get. There's the ambient, which includes music and sound effects. There's the symphonic, which is just the music, or the deluxe. So you can have both and you can switch it up depending on how you're feeling. If I may suggest, I think that the ambient is perfect for when you're playing and the symphonic is perfect for when you're reading this book. You know, when you're writing or cleaning or generally just trying to set a spooky vibe. Chris Reese is just a super imaginative, incredibly talented creator. This is actually not the first iteration of the Gothic game. No, there is a very fun story here. So this is a reimagining of the Gothic game, which was originally created in 1965 and released in 1992. Chris actually played it back in the day. I hadn't heard of this game until his reiteration and I'm so grateful that he was able to introduce it to me and to so many other people. It's very clear that this is a nostalgic labor of love and I would imagine a lot of pressure. Revamping a game like this, knowing that the original creators have given you both their trust and their blessing to take it on. I can't even begin to imagine being able to revisit a game like this that means so much to you. What an experience. Battle Royale stories scratch this itch. Feed this desire for something unflinching, something nasty, something bleak. There's a reason that the Battle Royale manga and movie is such a classic and has inspired things like, you know, 
The Hunger Games, Squid Games, hell, even Fortnite. This concept of trying to best your competition as the margin for victory just grows more and more narrow. I may be slightly partial to this because I have been working very diligently on my own battle royale game, my tabletop miniatures game about vampires called Night Thirst. But I mean, come on, it is the perfect recipe for something that is as gruesome as it is fun. Actually, when Black Letter first approached me to see if I had interest in trying out Damnation, I was a little hesitant, I was a little nervous. A spooky battle royale game, and there's a vampire expansion? I was afraid that it was too close to Night Thirst. But after some conversation about our games, it became clear that our works weren't in conflict with one another, but really complimentary. Damnation, a gothic game, a board game in which you slay your friends and condemn them to damnation, versus Night Thirst, a tabletop miniatures game where you're out hunting your friends. So not only have I been introduced to a really fun game that I'm going to continue enjoy sharing with people I care about, but also got to meet a really wonderful fellow creator who I feel like really understands this urge for having fun in a macabre setting. I'm really grateful for that. And speaking of grateful, I want to take a second to thank Black Letter so much for sponsoring today's episode and introducing me to a game that I'm truly having so much fun playing. And actually, excitingly enough, their second game, Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot, has been announced and will be coming to Kickstarter in 2024. I know I'm very excited about this and I've already signed up to be notified on launch, which I recommend that you do too. So we've recently welcomed in a new year and I hope yours is off to a really great start. I think this time of year we're often really putting a lot of undue pressure on ourselves and making all these resolutions that have to be these big just absolute life overhauls which can be great but I think it's really important to balance those out with fun and even silly challenges for ourselves. This year personally one of the things I really want to pursue is playing as many games as I can get my little goblin claws on. I want to step away from my computer, I want to turn off my phone and I want to spend good quality time making memories with people that I care about. I think if you're like me and you'd like to prioritize more unplugged quality time this year, Damnation the Gothic Game is the perfect game to kick that off with. This is the perfect time of year to cozy up with good friends, good food, and enjoy a game that's spooky, fun, and imaginative. Thank you again to Chris and Black Letter Games for your trust and introducing me to something that has brought a lot of joy into my life. And of course, thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you to you for watching this. If you'd like to learn more about Damnation the Gothic Game, as well as Gunpowder, Treason, and Plot, the links for both of those are down below. If you've played any new games so far this year, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. All right, guys, well, I better get going. I promised Giddy that we would play another round of Damnation. She's, um... She's concerningly into this game, but you know, it's, it's nice to see her picking up hobbies, I guess. So I'm gonna go take care of that, but until next time. Don't forget that you are currently making the world a better place just by being you. It's like your superpower. So keep doing that. Bye guys.